Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the reading of the White Album 2 light novel series. We are currently on volume one, continuing on the adventures of Haruki, Setsuna, and Kazusa. So they've finally recruited everyone. They finally have their finished version of the band. The problem now is them trying to get ready in just about two weeks left. So Kazusa has instructed Haruki to go into the next classroom over and improve himself, because arguably he is the weakest link as of now, while she and Setsuna work on her vocals and the piano together. So let's continue on. Haruki's piece. Damn it. I almost made it through with no mistakes that time. While the girls in the next room over were having their one-on-one, -on -one, I was applying myself to my guitar practice on my own. To start, I had to get to a point where I could play along with them. Was I even going to be able to manage that? No, come on. This is no time to wimp out. I love how Haruki talks to himself. I think that's very cute. A little bit weird, but very cute. There was no room to stew in anxiety. All that I could do was move forward. I and my pick. In the time that I spent grappling with these strings, it became completely dark outside. This was November. The days were short. When Ogiso poked her head in to suggest we get going, it was past 8 p.m. Ooh, I wonder what time they started practice. I would imagine about three or four. The three of us departed the school, the teacher on patrol scolding us for sticking around so long. Ogiso chattered happily about this and that, wasn't her throat sore? And as I nodded along, I suddenly realized the unusual position I was in. I was leaving school with Setsuna Ogiso, Miss Hojo High School, and Kazusa Toma, the aloof beauty. If any other students had seen us, they would probably have thought, what's someone like that doing with them? It was just a perk. <laughs> Haruki, don't think of it as a perk. Honestly, you don't need to think so much about what others think anyway. You're part of the same club. It's not that weird. Ogisa was walking home, so we split off from her at the station, leaving me and Toma alone. What happened to the conversation from moments before? <laughs> it's so awkward because Toma's so quiet and her and Haruki still don't really get along at this point. The only sounds to be heard were the th dull thundering of the trains and the chatter of the passengers. Um, why was I so nervous? Because we hadn't talked one-on-one -on -one since Saturday? It finally hit me that Ogiso had been handling most of the talking. Um, so what do you think of Ogiso's vocals? In the end, I decided to bring Ogiso herself in as my topic. I realized that I hadn't actually asked Toma for her impressions yet. Decent. For an amateur. Should be good enough to bluff for the kinds of people who will show up at the festival show. Right? Good. Inviting Ogiso in hadn't been a mistake. Yeah. I think she's amazing. I guess I said that already. The vocalist is the face of the band, and I feel good relying on her. Kitahara. You think you have time to concern yourself about other people? Toma spoke coldly and bluntly, as if to say, and the guitar isn't the face of the band? I curled up on myself pitifully. <laughs> I mean, it's a weird thing to say. Not that weird. But the fact that we know as readers that they both are crushing on him, for him to say, she's amazing, she's the poster girl, wow. He's really got to learn how to choose his topics better to both of the girls. The point is, practice. Play through it. Review any and all points where you get stuck. Then play through again. When you take a break from that, practice your scales. At your level, it would honestly be ideal for you to skip school and practice 24 hours a day. Ah, okay. <laughs> She didn't seem to be joking in the least. I slumped again. 
What a crazy practice that would be. And she is serious because Toma grew up in that lifestyle, growing up as a famous musician's daughter, being forced to learn, to learn, to learn. That's hard. Well, the next day I can use the music room again is Tuesday. Until then, I'll stay at home with my headphones on and play for 10 hours a day, like I said. Still, only being able to use music room number one on Tuesdays and Thursdays was, t was rough. Hmm. It would be best to get you playing with us as soon as possible, though. Right. I'm going to work at it so that I can join in as soon as I can. If things are looking promising for Ogiso, I hope you'll help me out, too. Aw, asking for help is nice. Knowing when you need help is very important. I had already experienced Toma's strength as a leader that single day over a summer break. I would very much like to do that, but improving vocals is best done one on one. It wouldn't be soon. Ah, uh, okay. I guess you know best. Of course, the vocals were what would stand out the most, but Though I might say that out loud, internally I felt pretty dejected. I hadn't received any direct coaching from Toma since that day in the summer. I had been hoping a bit that it could happen again. The train is arriving at Iwazucho. Iwazucho. With all of that, the train slid into Toma's station. Anyway. Yeah, see you. Tomorrow's another day. After alighting on the platform, Toma turned back to look at me. Listen. Hmm? Kitahara, you'll improve more quickly if you're playing with someone rather than alone. She seemed to be struggling with saying this. Maybe she was feeling bad for prioritizing Ogiso over me, trying to consider my feelings. So I did my best to act completely unconcerned. <laughs> Of course, because you don't want to reveal your true feelings. That would just be silly. Maybe so, but Ogiso comes first, right? If the vocals are outstanding, no one will notice if the guitar isn't that great. Not that I'm going to slack off or anything. <laughs> Have that been the wrong thing to say? L look, Kitahara, if, um, if you're this w weekend, huh? What was she mumbling over? The doors closing announcement made it even harder to hear anything. What was that? Tell me, the doors are closing. N never mind. Just practice 24 hours a day. Do better. After stopping this order, Toma quickly walked away. The doors closed and a literal distance opened up between us. Oh, literally and figuratively. She tried, though. She really tried. She's doing her best. I had thought she was being careful with me, but apparently it had been the opposite. She had been bright red in the face, too. Was she that angry? I knew she wasn't that fond of me, but were we doomed never to get along? Hmm. As the train clattered along, I looked out the window. Little white dots of light from residential neighborhoods appeared in the darkness. Somewhere out there, Toma's black hair was rustling in the night breeze. Mid-November. It would probably be a little while yet before the snow fell. Beautifully written. Beautifully done. Of course, as readers, it's super obvious what she was trying to say and invite him over for the weekend to practice. But... Haruki doesn't know it, nor does he suspect she would ever do something like that for him, so he is still in the dark. Anyway, let's continue on. This is the WA2 Light Novel, Volume 1, Session 9. Fifteen days until the show. So just a, two weeks and a day. Haruki's Peace. I feel kind of bad, Takeya. I didn't realize things would end up like this. Friday, the day after the light music club became active, after school. As I couldn't use music room number one today, I was walking with Takeya to the station, planning to practice at home. End up like what? Inviting Setsuna Ogiso to join? 
Kazu Satoma deciding to go for it, or me ending up in charge of synths? Ah, uh, all of it? I had actually been talking about the last thing, but when I thought about it, all that stuff was my doing. I mean, honestly, what he did was necessary. Because what, if he didn't do it, the music club ends. Now that he's done it, even if there are complaints and things that, you know, things they wished were different, at least they're allowed to continue. Hey, don't worry about it. Shoot, I think you'd be proud of yourself. You managed to bring in two powerhouses and save the light music club from collapsing. I still can't hardly believe it. Can't hardly. Should be can hardly. You give me all the credit for that. The two of them just joined because they're nice people. Don't be so modest. Seriously, though, what happened? You've never had any relationships with girls, and suddenly you've pulled two top drawer babes at once. Top drawer babes. <gasps> That's such a funny expression. I've never heard that, but I love it. Top drawer babes. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you it's not like that? Haruki, don't be like me. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that, but I'll tell you anyway. What the hell? No, I don't need your advice. Me become like Takeya? There was absolutely no need to worry about that. <laughs> oh, Haruki. Neither of those girls would ever be interested in someone like me to begin with. Oh, Haruki. <laughs> He's such a dumb protagonist. The whole idea was completely backwards. Man, though, just thinking about all that programming is making my shoulders stiffen up. I followed along with Takeya's subject change. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be pretty draining. Though, I have to keep practicing like crazy, or Toma might throw me out before the show even happens. Why are you complaining? You get to play your favorite song. Well, yeah. I was going to play White Album in a live show. How could I not be happy about that? Hey guys, you headed home? We turned to find Io, her bag hanging from her shoulder. Oh, hey Io. I heard you got Tomasan into the light music club too. Setsuna told me yesterday. She seemed thrilled. You knew about this before I did? Takeya looked a little put out by this. Aww. That's so cute, though, that Setsuna and Io are friends. Because Setsuna didn't really have anybody she was close with, but now she's talking to Io a little bit more. I love that. I'm really impressed, Haruki. I didn't think you could get along with someone like Tomasan. Ogiso had a lot more to do with it than I did. She did most of the convincing. Hmm? Well, anyway, that's awesome. Takeya, I already know you didn't really do anything, so you can relax. Yo, why do you have to drag me into this? Well, I know it's a fact. You're terrified of Tomasan. Did they really have to jump straight into fighting like this? I mean, they're not fighting fighting, they're just a bit, little bickering, that's all. Shouldn't you guys be practicing, though? Haruki and I will be hard at work at home. We're going to be pretty busy until the festival. Oh, man, now I feel like I'm doing something wrong, heading to cram school. Io, you wouldn't happen to play any instruments, would you? Afraid not. Wish I could, though. All I've ever done is basketball. You've got plenty of stamina, that's about it. <laughs> Shut up, Takeya. I know you waste your energy on a regular basis. What was that? What? Will you two quit fighting? Okay, now that was kind of a fighting. That was kind of cute. <laughs> the big sports head and the big w ladies man. I sighed. The two of them kept grumbling each other. Grumbling each other should be grumbling at each other until I got off at my stop. Sometimes they made it hard to tell whether they liked or hated each other. Once I was finally alone, I pumped myself up to get to work. I got off the train, passed through the ticket gate, and that's when it happened. Kitara-san. Someone called out to me. 
I gave a jump and turned around. Ah, it is you. It's been a little while, Kitahara-san. Yanagihara. <laughs> the dejected voice. Somebody he really didn't want to see. I knew this face very well. Actually, I knew who it was even before I turned around. Because this was a voice that I had heard many times singing. Even before I heard Ogiso sing. Tomo Yanagihara. Class 2C. The one who had once thrown the light music club into disarray, driving it to its dissolution. There she was, an easygoing smile pasted on her face. What a crazy coincidence. Oh, do you live around here? What are you doing here? <laughs> he does not care. This is also interesting because this scene was not in the game. They threw it in here to kind of introduce you to Yanagihara-san because in the game, it's a little bit vague, I feel like. Until you go through and play through all of the heroines and the side heroines routes, you don't really get to know that much about Tomo. But now here in the novel, they want you to straight up know her from the beginning. So this is a nice added scene. Apparently, we had been on the same train. What am I doing? I'm on my way to hang out with someone. I mean, obviously. Yanagihara gave a teasing laugh. I guess I could only guess what the look on my face must be. Oh yeah, I heard almost everyone quit the light music club. That's too bad. You don't feel responsible for that at all? Whose fault do you think? Me? Oh, I don't know about that. If anything, I would say I'm the victim here. I had to sacrifice my big chance. Pointless. Trying to talk with her was pointless. Come on, don't glare at me like that. We were bandmates once, remember? I mean, sure, you were just a substitute, but... Yanagi had a smile as she said this, but her face quickly changed. I really do regret it. She mumbled, mu muttered... <laughs> <laughs> trying to combine a bunch of words together, muttered bitterly. Singing in the school festival show would have put me at the front of everyone's mind. I could have gotten so many more votes. Oh, you think she's being sincere for two seconds and then she flips the script again and now she's greedy yet again. Indeed, she had decided to sing with the light music club purely for the sake of improving her chances in the Miss Hojo High contest. The original Miss Hojo contest, the one held by Hojo University, was the kind of event that drew press coverage from local TV stations. Several past participants had drawn the eye of big players in the entertainment industry. Rumor had it that Yanagihara was serious about becoming a performer, which meant she must be desperate to prove herself in high school, even before participating in the university level contest. With her looks, at the very least, she could probably pass for an entertainer. But last year, Yanagihara had taken second place. Not because of her personality, but because of the presence of Ogiso, the undefeated queen. Ooh, can you sense the bitter rivalry there? This year, in pursuit of her revenge, she had set her eye on the light music club bringing every member into the palm of her hand and leading us to destruction. I mean, don't you have some responsibility for the club breaking up, Kitahara-san? You could have just left like everyone else. Yes, the only one who hadn't been ensnared by this girl with her actress-level looks was me, because I hadn't been interested in her in the first place. Ooh, isn't Haruki so special, not falling for the girl? Looking at her from that outside perspective, Yanagihara's true personality was plain to see. And her letting that slip around the other members was probably the source of the whole conflict, now that I thought about it. Why are you still carrying that guitar around, by the way? What, are you still planning to play the show? Everyone left, remember? Are you and Izuka-san going to play a guitar duet? Well, I suppose that could be interesting to see. Yanagihara chuckled contemptuously. 
Listen, Kitahara-san, if you beg me, I'll come back. I don't know why, but you wanted a female vocalist specifically, right? I had almost forgotten about that. Of course, she had to bring it up. She's so rude. I hate this kind of person. Just thinking she's better than everyone and thinking that everyone's going to kiss her feet to try to get what they want. You know, like, stop trying to take advantage of people. And the reason she doesn't get along with Haruki so much is because he's refusing to do that. He was the only one that wasn't pulled in by it. Maybe, but I'm not bringing you back in, Yanagihara. Even a duet would be preferable to that. Oh, got him. At this, irritation came plainly into Yanagihara's face. Oh, really? Feel free to embarrass yourself then. After spitting this out, she stormed away. Damn it. Why did I have to run into her? I sighed, then looked up at the sky and took a deep breath to fix my mood. Unbeknownst to her, we had two new members, and one of them was the Miss Hojo High she so detested. I would show her. The show was going to be a smash, and Ogisa would win for the third year in a row. I couldn't afford to bog us down. I pumped myself up again. It was time to practice. Oh, I'm glad it served as like an encouragement to Haruki there rather than just making him depressed and making him not want to practice and move on. That's really nice. So let's move on to WA2 Light Novel Volume 1, Session 10. 11 days until the show. So a time skip of about three days from the last start of the session. Haruki's Peace. I spent the whole weekend, Saturday and Sunday, eyes deep in the guitar. Eyes deep. Oh, I guess that makes sense. I sat through class with my head foggy, napped during break time, dashed home after school, and shut myself up in my room. As Toma had instructed, I played White Album over and over, giving special focus to practicing the parts where I got stuck. And of course, I practiced each scale many times. Afterward, I couldn't remember what much of what happened between Saturday afternoon and Monday morning. Maybe I was groggy, but I think it was more likely that after repeating the same thing so many times, my brain refused to store any more of it in my memory. Instead, I memorized my finger movements, slowly but surely. He's working so hard. Thank goodness, though, it's a song he had already practiced, because trying to go from nothing to 100 would be very difficult for Haruki at this point. It was difficult not to fall asleep in class on Monday. Well, maybe I was half asleep, actually. When I ran into Takea on the way to school, he took one look at me and laughed. Oh my god, you look like shit. Then, Tuesday. Poor Haruki, he's really, really trying. After school, in music room number one, my fingers danced over the guitar, thrilled to be playing White Album through an amp again after so long. I had been using an amp with headphones at home, so the sound wasn't all that different. But between a sound that only resonated in my ears and a melody that wrapped around my whole body, the latter was definitely a better feeling. And somehow, I got the feeling that I had improved compared with last Thursday. But as I was on my way home, not remotely good enough. Toma told me sharply that I was terrible. <laughs> She's so cruel. Oh my god. Such a harsh judge. And not to get too excited. Apparently, she had heard me playing through the open window. <sighs> That's not true. Kitahara kun is sounding great. Okiso did her best to be supportive, but that just made me feel worse. Then, at the train sta at the station front, we parted ways with Setsuna, and Toma and I boarded the train together again. Phew. <sighs> I yawned. Maybe the exhaustion of all that playing was getting to me. Sleepy, Kitahara? 
nah, I'm fine. I'm just a bit tired. And I've got more work to do today. I guess you really have been playing 10 hours a day. Good for him. Toma gave a small chuckle. Yeah, I managed it somehow. Listen, is my guitar playing really that terrible? Am I still far away from being able to play along with you? You aren't making quite as many errors, but your tempo keeps slipping. You haven't got the rhythm yet. Uh, oh. Well, that tends to happen when you're playing alone. If we try it together, we can find out for sure. Ah, okay. You Will you watch me practice tomorrow then? Toma suddenly shifted her gaze to her feet and went silent, as though she were trying to remember something she had been thinking about. Shortly, however, she looked up again and spoke. Here's the thing, Kitahara. Ogiso has reached a pretty important point now. If we want to get her vocals on track as soon as possible, we can't stop her special training now. Oh, okay. He's so sad. He just wants to perform together with his friends. Like, that was the whole point of it. He wants to make music together with other people. But being alone in the room, one room over is so sad. The vocals were the top priority after all. Nothing I could say to that. Though I did feel a little disappointed. How long do you think it'll take her to be ready? Two or three more days, I think. I can't bother with you until then. I can't bother with you. That's so cruel. So, I was going to be on my own until the weekend. We had less than two weeks left before the big show. Would we make it in time? Um, so, Kitara, you have your guitar right now? Huh? Well, yeah. I did have the guitar case on my back. <laughs> That's so cute. Do you have your guitar? And it's clearly just like gigantic over his shoulder. <laughs> you said you wanted me to watch you practice? Toma was practically whispering an extremely serious look on her face. Yeah, I did. Oh, are you going to do it? Well, yes, I am, but... Right now. The train is arriving at Iwazucho. Iwazucho. The announcement cut me off as I asked her to repeat herself, and the doors slid open with a <laughs> Time to get off. Uh, huh? As I desperately tried to figure out what Toma meant, she clarified, You're getting off too. We're going to my house. Come on. <laughs> That's a really nice cutoff point. Toma's finally, I wouldn't say opened herself up, but she's volunteering to do something nice for Haruki. That is a big turning point for her. Like she's finally admitting that she will help. Whether or not it's because she doesn't want to embarrass herself is still to be seen, but it is. It's the start of something. No way. What's with that stupid look on your face? I mean, I didn't exactly expect you to live in a place like this. The room was enormous. On the wood flooring stood a piano, as well as a great variety of other instruments here and there. The equipment looked expensive, though I wouldn't really know, and there were microphones hanging from the ceiling, of a shape that I wasn't familiar with. It looked, for all the world, like a professional studio. I mean, given that her mom is an internationally famous pianist, it's not that surprising that her house kind of looks like a recording studio. This is my practice space. I don't live in here. Well, I know that. 10 or 15 minutes from the station. As it rose up out of the darkness, it was plain from the outside that the Toma house was unusual, especially when it came to its size. After dragging my dazed self through a yard that was big enough to take a jog around, an entryway with a shoe rack that was entirely too large, and a living room that was almost laughably spacious, Toma took me to, of all places, the basement. The basement. Yes, the basement. <laughs> Why is that so surprising? The basement. It's a musician's house. 
And what I found there was this studio-like room that you would never find in a normal house. Well, Toma's mother was a world-famous pianist. So now he realizes it. So before we move on to learning a little bit more about their practice and Toma's house, we will stop there for today. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the White Album 2 Light Novel Reading, and I'll be back to you with future episodes soon. So until then, hope you take care. See you!